Okay, now I want to talk to you about, I remember <clears throat> back whenever, before I died, way before I died, whenever I was a Christian, and I remember struggling with something I think everybody has struggled with, and that is uh, all of the really horrible things that are going on, and you know, you guys know my history with child abuse, and I was very, very crazy, knee-jerky uh, about child abuse and um, abuse of women. I was crazy nuts about it. I could not understand all of the the horrible things that were going on in this planet and I used to talk to God and say why and how and these kids these little kids they didn't do anything wrong they're not sinners so why why is that and um, I used to struggle with the with the Christian belief that you had to you had to follow these certain rules by the Bible and the older I got the more I saw that well how can you even out somebody who was born in America where Christianity is the norm where you know it's a very very high percentage of the people in the United States are taught Christianity and then what if you were born in you were in a in a tribe in a jungle and you never ever even heard of the the Bible and or what if you were raised um, where the norm is uh, Hindu or Buddhist or, or 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 Muslim? How is that fair? How is that fair that ever everybody's judged by these same rules and some people don't even get the rules? And even then, when it comes to the Bible, everybody disagrees with it. There's like forty thousand different uh, Christian denominations now on on everybody disagreeing on what the Bible means. And I'd look at that. And I'd say, well, how can you judge these people based on this book that some people don't even uh, know anything about? Other people, they know about it, but it is not the norm. And then in a country where it's the norm, no one can agree on what it means. And how is this fair? And I had a real problem with with the justice of it all. And... Uh, so I struggled with that for a very long time, as you guys know, and eventually came out and became a, a lovist. <laughs> That's the only thing I could call it, is I believe I believe in love. And then eventually, of course, I died, and then everything kind of made sense. Then from that perspective of everything that I learned from the other side, and I came back and I went, oh, okay, now that makes sense. That is fair. That is just. So it is from that point that I want to I want to talk to you guys about things like that the tough things the hard things that that people don't want to think about and that is severe uh, child abuse and people who have been tortured no matter if it's a, it's a part of war or it's a part of a, a psychopath or whatever I mean I'm talking about torture, and I don't mean just physical torture, because depending upon what kind of person it is, mental torture can be just as bad as physical torture. So how does this, how does this work, this physical torture, and how do you wrap your mind around it? Well, I wanted to start out with, as you've heard me say over and over again, nothing happens to anyone or anything without its... Uh, uh, agreeing to it now, on some level or another now if you're dealing if you're if you're being tortured and you're in the, that's part of the game that you signed up for the person signed up for then of course they're not going to understand that in with in this human body at the time because it is a part of the game that they've signed up for now I know that that doesn't make any sense that anybody would volunteer for to be tortured but let me tell you as you as you know I have I, I don't do physical normally and I've never done human physical but from where I'm coming from just signing up for here period is non-stop torture compared to where I'm used to being all of it is difficult not just a little bit a lot 
even the people who have what you would consider a good life, it's still so far um, from even the lowest level of good where I come from. So to me, it's all torture. Uh, from my perspective, it's all torture. But let's move forward. Uh, first of all, I want you all to understand that everybody agreed to whatever it is that's happening. But let me give you a, a little bit more insight as well. When somebody is physically tortured, number one, even though the scientists don't know this yet, uh, I think they say that, they're, that the body will put out chemicals or hormones into the body that have a deadening effect to the torture that is happening. And I don't know, I think I've heard somewhere that uh, somebody who does torture, they'll torture somebody and then just wait and then come back to it. Otherwise, that deadening effect will keep going. And I think scientists say that, that those hormones and stuff that's in the body it has a limited amount. That then, then it can't do it anymore. And I want to assure you that yes, it can. It can do it for as long as necessary. So that's the first thing is that, uh, and I remember this. I remember this very clearly in being beat up that I felt the first punch or two that, that were landed on me. And then after that, it just felt very much like pressure. There was no pain anymore. There wasn't any pain from the hits that I received um, or I, I didn't even have any pain residual pain from the ones that I did feel so it was like the first punch or the second punch would or kick or whatever would trigger this effect in my body and my body would numb itself and then I wouldn't feel it anymore and the person that was doing the who was doing it the aggressor um, he would pause and wait and still, even if it was a while before the last one, it still just took one more punch and bam, it was deadened again. Now, the next day I would feel very, very sore. Um, so the after effect, like the next day, I would, I would be very sore and, and hurty. But in the moment when it was happening, that's what's ha what happened. And there isn't anything esoteric about that. That happened to me physically and it happened to me many times many times then whenever it was more intense and not just being beat up but if there was psychological or sexual abuse involved especially whenever i was young i do remember very very clearly that i would um separate myself from my body and i would look the other way i would uh, be in a field full of flowers and although I would know that it was going on. I could hear and I could feel, but it was like um, it was buffered in a way uh, so that it wasn't uh, that bad. And um, I, would, I would look down and see what was happening and then look away and then look down and then look away. And I remember I wasn't a long ways away from my body. It was like right above my body, sort of. But I didn't feel what was going on there either. Now, that took uh, quite a few times of that kind of activity happening to me before I learned to do that. But uh, I also know that people do the multiple personality thing where a different personality will take the, the abuse. I did not do that, but I did definitely uh, come outside of my body, and so I didn't feel the actual pain in body at the time. So that can happen. And also, um, a person can leave, especially if it's a torture that is like a serial killer type thing where you're the person is tortured for an extended period of time, uh, over a long period of time, and then they eventually die, uh, then... A lot, a lot, a lot of people in that circumstance will leave the body uh, like 99% of it will be left and just enough will be left to keep the body alive so that the heart is beating and the person is breathing. But most of the um, 
the spiritual part of that body leaves uh, completely, completely leaves and goes on to its next, um, where, wherever it was going to go in the, the next time around. And the reason why all of this is done that way, and then there are some beings that want to experience the physical pain and will stay in it and take it completely because they want that experience and then all those other things they're always they're also correlated with the uh the perpetrator and the victim's family friends the perpetrator's family and friends and all of this is very comp complicated having to do with all the god entities and what they want to experience uh, if the victim is quite young and they die, then frequently the um, God entities that are in the playing the role of the parents, they signed up for a really, really, um, they want a really, really intense loss in the game that they're playing. And I don't want to downplay the horrendous nature of these things because if you are have anything to do with any of it uh, no matter what side you're on um, they are horrendous and they're difficult and um, coming from the from the place of someone who has been the victim I understand that completely and totally um, certainly looking at it from a, an adult standpoint I understand but I just want you to know that there are more likely than not most of the time whoever the victim is they are not feeling very much of the actual pain if they die if they are planning on dying they know they're going to die frequently they leave way way sooner than it looks like they've left uh, it'll look like they're still alive when in reality most of them is gone and anyone who has been around someone who's passed away, uh, if you've been at their bedside, most people, you can tell when the per part that they say, that part that is the person that they know, when that part leaves. Uh, you can just tell. There is a, and I was around a, a lot of deaths. I held a lot of hands. And you can just tell when that part leaves. So I just wanted you to know uh, all of you guys are so loving and you're you're so giving out there that I wanted you guys to know that unless the entity wants to have that experience of the pain that's involved with those horrendous stories that you hear, most of the time there are alternatives that they don't they don't have to unless they want to feel all of that pain. Now, for somebody who is tortured over a long time in many different ways, like me, there, the actual pain involved was not the biggest thing for me. It was uh, the fear of it happening again. That's what really caused a lot of the problems with me. But ultimately, my higher, higher self signed up for that too. And there was a reason for it. Okay? Um... Hopefully that will answer some of your uh, concerns. Uh, but now as you're looking at that, so as you look out throughout the world and you hear or see these stories, um, of course you're going to have that pain of it being horrendous. But try to follow that as quickly as you can with what I'm saying here so that you can get past it and visualize uh, a peaceful world where everyone... Um, uses telepathy and everyone is taken care of everyone could communicate well the people on the planet and the planet itself are healthy and loved because as long as you focus on the negative aspects you will be drawn to timelines where it continues to happen so yes I know that you can't just immediately blow it off but hopefully this video will help you in dealing with those horrendous things that happen Okay, all right, kind of a not so great couple of videos here, but I feel strongly that they need to be put out. So I'm going to put them out because that's what I do. Okay, <laughs> all right, huge hugs to everybody. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye now.